Thomas Jefferson is the one who introduced the terminology of separation of church and state. In an 1802 letter to the Danbury Baptists, Jefferson said that the First Amendment built, quote, a wall of separation between church and state. What did Mr. Jefferson mean by this? I'll post a link in the description of this video with an abundance of other quotes that I believe make quite clear that the idea of separation of church and state, in Mr. Jefferson's mind at least, is a separation of jurisdiction, not influence. Thus, the federal government may not tell the American people how to worship. We don't have a federal religion. Washington has no business telling the church what she may or may not say from the pulpit. When we talk about the Constitution, we must remember that the Constitution was written to limit the federal government. So the First Amendment is not a limitation on the American people or American churches. In fact, it wasn't even conceived to apply to the state governments. The Constitution was meant to constrain the federal government alone. That principle alone should answer a lot of questions about this dividing wall between church and state. It is also worth noting that at the time of the ratification of the Constitution, the state constitutions were all explicitly Christian. Some of the colonial constitutions even required religious tests for candidates seeking to hold public office. Some other facts that are terribly inconsistent with the modern idea of separation between church and state follow. The Continental Congress issued four fast day proclamations. John Adams wrote to his wife, we have appointed a continental fast. Millions will be upon their knees at once before the great creator, imploring his forgiveness and blessing, his smiles on American councils and arms. The Declaration of Independence itself invokes Christianity when it says that we are endowed by our creator with certain inalienable rights. Even making a case for deism contradicts the separation of church and state. But looking at the writings of our founders, it is clear the creator that they are referring to is the one true God of Scripture. In 1777, Congress issued an official resolution instructing the Committee on Commerce to import 20,000 copies of the Bible. The Supreme Court declared in the 1892 case of the Church of the Holy Trinity versus the United States that we are a Christian nation. Speaking of the Supreme Court, a picture of Moses is even engraved into the east side of the Supreme Court building, holding the two tablets of the Law of God. I'm just beginning to scratch the surface of the immense amount of evidence that testifies to the Christianity of America. An honest look at the history of America leaves no doubt America is not a nothing country. It's a Christian country. The idea of separation between church and state must be understood in light of this. An honest examination of history paints the goal of separation between church and state as protection of the rights of the Christian church, not a limitation thereof. I would encourage you to look into this for yourself. I'll provide links to some great resources in the description of this video. The separation of church and state was never meant to be a separation of God and state, but rather a denial of the federal government's authority over the church. The problem, however, with this mythological mandate runs even deeper. Everyone is religious. Even the atheist has foundational assumptions which govern their lives, axioms that they take on faith, and an ultimate authority to which they submit and which they, in effect, worship whether that is themselves, the government, or even the great god of chance. And everyone's religion will affect their political decisions. If someone claims to be a Christian and yet works politically to legalize abortion or gay marriage, something is wrong. Jesus said that we will either be with him or against him. There is no middle ground, no religion-free zone. Christ claims all authority. Every atom of this universe belongs to him. If we think that we can claim him as Lord and yet leave him at home with our Bibles when it comes time to make political decisions, then we are sorely mistaken. If someone's first loyalty is to Christ, that must and will affect the decisions that he makes in office. If it doesn't, then either he has some foundational misunderstandings that need addressed, or he doesn't truly see the God of the Bible 
as the god to whom he owes total allegiance. This applies to every religion. Our core beliefs cannot be separated from our actions and goals. Our presuppositions will affect our policy. Our religion will affect our reality. There's a name for those people whose actions and ostensible beliefs are different. They're called hypocrites. So not only is the separation of church and state, as currently understood, a myth of epic proportions, a constitutional non-entity, a doctrine directly contrary to the intent of our founding fathers, but, as it turns out, it's also impossible. Oh, and P.S. Our current president seems to enjoy pulling out scriptures to justify his socialistic policies. Setting aside for a moment the egregious errors in biblical exegesis required to use Christianity as justification for Marxism, I must ask, if a truly Christian and conservative president used scripture to back up his political decisions, would the media be just as happy? Or do they need to learn how to coexist too? <laughs>